Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another time here. Welcome to another time in the hopper room, another time to pray. And uh, we'll get to lead ourselves into the place of prayer uh, by sharing from the word of God, obviously. I've been doing a series here in the book of Daniel. And for this Lenten season, we'll be in it, uh, verse 2 and 3 of uh, Daniel chapter 10. And we'll use that, we're using that opportunity to do a series on godly sorrow, right? Too much talking about fasting, fasting, right? Uh, people have done fasting in different ways over time. Uh, fasting is one of those um, confusion points for me when I came into faith, uh, one that tr troubled my life, turned my life upside down so much I, I lost one year of schooling because of a lack of understanding of what fasting is. Right, so uh, it's kind of uh, pivotal and and kind of uh, like pleasing that the Lord will give me this opportunity to do a study, uh, a teaching and fasting. I never planned it. I never planned it. But somehow, as a part of a series we're doing in, in Daniel, we've come here. So, uh, like I say, I love coincidence, right? Like Albert Einstein would say, Coincidence is the way by which God hides himself. God hides himself in what we call coincidence. They are not coincidence before God. They are things that God has ordained, has planned, you know, to occur, right? They are, they are part of the plan of God, but we think they are coincidence because uh, we, don't, we didn't know or we don't know what God had scheduled to happen, you know? So even though I didn't plan for it, God scheduled this to happen. Uh, you know, kind of God scheduled us to be on um, Daniel chapter 10, verse 2 to 3 in this uh, Lenten season so that we can do the study uh, on fasting, you know, so I'm pleased to do it. I'm happy to do it. And I just hope you're learning something. You're picking one thing or the other that's blessing your life. Uh, some of this comes from the pain I have been through, right? I've been through pain, you know, in understanding what fasting is. You know, so it's really a, a pleasure, you know, to be able to do this and, and share this on the background of what I have been through personally, you know. So let's go, let's, let's continue where we stopped yesterday. Yesterday we were uh, on uh, verse 5 of Isaiah 58. We had entered into Isaiah 58 and we began to talk about the fast that is pleasing before God. Right, not just fasting, but a fast that's pleasing before God, right? And it's not exactly the way we have been told or we're being told it is, right? Uh, one of the things we'll see as we go through the study, you know, someone used to say, hey, if you don't pray, when you're fasting, you're not fasting. It's not true. You won't find that in the Bible, right? That is people's tradition, right? That has no basis whatsoever in the Bible. The fasting that God receives is not the one that you pray because when you are fasting, that is not in the Bible, right? So, you know, people have brought a lot of things into, into, into Christianity that have no basis, no routine, no seedling, no, 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 no correspondence, no, no correspondence to the truth, right? And they've just, right? We are people that belong to the way, not just the way, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We are not a religion or religious organization. We are those that belong to the way, the way, the way, Jesus Christ, the way, Jesus Christ, the truth, Jesus Christ, the life. Jesus Christ. It's a life. It's a lifestyle we're called to, not a religion, not a form, but the reality of it, right? The reality of it, the life, the, 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 the real substance of it, right? So we're not here to, I don't spend my time doing that, right? Uh, I'm not here trying to impress anybody and thank god i don't have to impress anybody i hold nobody anything right except god that is why i do this that is why god has given me this platform that i can tell this word and not hold anybody anything let's pray 
I hope you get blessed. This is no religious time. This is just a time to fortify ourselves. Just like we're talking about fasting, the Bible says, build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So praying in the Holy Ghost is an exercise, it's a spiritual discipline, right? Just the same way fasting is a spiritual exercise, a spiritual discipline, right? Praying in the Holy Ghost is a spiritual exercise, a spiritual discipline. And the Bible says in First Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, it says, all these things which are godliness, fasting is godliness, praying in the Holy Ghost is godliness. It says it, 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 it has benefit. It has a reward in all things. Not some things, all things, all things, all things, all things. When I fast, when I pray, when I pray in the Holy Ghost, it has a benefit, a reward in all things. Not just in this life, but in the life to come, right? And that's where we stopped talking about fasting uh, yesterday, uh, looking at uh, Isaiah 58 verse 5, right? Fasting is a discipline. It's a spiritual discipline. It's a Christian discipline, right? We don't have to fast and pray. Prayer is a discipline. Fasting is a discipline. There are disciplines all on their own. They can be brought together, but they don't have to always be together. I've had someone say, oh, if you did fast, yeah, you don't pray, it's not fasting. That's not correct. That's not scriptural. Fasting on its own is a spiritual discipline. Prayer on its own is a spiritual discipline. They can be separate and they can be brought together, right? Doesn't change anything, right? Obviously, because you're a spiritual person and when fasting increases your spirituality, you would pray. You would pray. Automatically, your spirit will pray. But you don't have to make a religion out of the prayer. That's all I'm saying, right? So fasting is a form of discipline. That's what we'll see in the Pharisees. They would, uh, they would talk about fasting twice a week. Years ago, I used to do some of those things. I used to do like fast once a week. Once a week, I don't think I'd ever did twice a week. I used to have things like that, you know. Um, churches, my whole church used to do the uh, first three days of the month. My new church does every Wednesday, right? So they do it every week, every Wednesday, right? Different people have different intermittent fasting they do, you know. And in this discourse, we're talking about intermittent Fasted life, right? Intermittent life, fasting as a part of your life could be the lifestyle you choose, right? Which could be twice a week, once a week, three first three days of the month, uh, first 21 days of the year, whatever. There are different ones you can do. The key thing is that you need to understand why you're doing it. It is a discipline. It is an exercise. It is a discipline. It is an exercise right to get your spirit your soul in a place of worship in a place of spiritual sensitivity in a place where the essences are caught away in a place where it is under control it is not controlling you it is not out of control but you have an, a control you're exercising control over your soul right you're causing a humbling a quieting a calming right of your soul to bring it under subjection, right? That's what Paul was saying. He said that I beat my body. I beat my body so that my body does not take me where I don't want to go to, right? But when he's beating his body, it's not necessarily the body that the effort is. It's, it's the soul. He does it in on his body or on his physical or on his, or whatever he does it, but it's not for the sake of doing that. Is the effect it has on the soul that is important. See, that's where the Catholic Church misses it when it talks about all this penitence thing. I mean, God is interested in all of those punishment, cutting of your body or whatever penitence you talk about. The penitence that does not touch your soul is useless. It's stupid. It's a waste of time. It's a religion. God is not interested in you killing your body for the sake of killing your body. It's all about bringing your soul under control. That is the focus. That is the intent. That's the heart of doing it. If you miss the heart, you missed it all. God does not accept it. Amen. God help us all. I got to stop here. My time is over. Uh, have a good one. Good remaining of the afternoon. See you tomorrow. God